This is on Drop Rate, a series where I hunt items in Old School RuneScape within their stated rates according to the OSRS wiki. If I get the items within the rates, for example up to 10,000 lava dragons for a visage, I get to keep everything I earn during the grind. If I do not receive it, I have to give away half the loot to you guys, the viewers. With that, let's get into today's episode. The drop rates are finally out for the new Desert Treasure 2 bosses, and in this episode we are taking on the most handsome boss of them all, Duke Susilus. The item we are hunting for is the Eye of the Duke at a drop rate of 1 in 720, which is one of the four pieces required to make the Soul Reaper Axe. The boss can only be defeated using melee, so I decided to go all out and buy full Torva and a Scythe of Vitter, making this my gear setup and inventory to take on the boss, which totals up to to 1.7 billion GP in value. We are starting off with a completely fresh collection log for this boss specifically. We only have one KC, which I had to do during the quest. So let's see how many slots we can fill in and hopefully get that axe piece. Before I actually get into a kill at all, I've marked these specific tiles on both the east and the west side. And the reason why is because the running mechanic in RuneScape moves you two tiles at a time. So if you have these tiles marked, the beam that you have to avoid when passing these actually can never hit you because they only have one tile tile radius and I have marked the ones where it will never hit. It is basically the same thing as the water room in Tombs of a Mascot before Sebak, so if you've done that before you know what this is. Let's actually go over quickly and very simply how I'm going to be killing this boss. So to begin I drop a couple of food to have inventory space, I run over to one of the sides and start picking these mushrooms at the end of it. After I picked three of them I will use my pestle and mortar on them and get 15 of each of them. You actually only need 12 12, but because my herb lore level is not 80, I'm only 78, so I might have to actually get that up a bit. I only get 5 per time instead of 6, and you actually need a total of 12, so getting that 80 herb lore could be absolutely massive. When I've got 15 from both sides, I run down to the middle and mine the saltpeter. I have to get 15 of this as well, or ideally 12, but I only have 78 mining as well. And it's the same thing here, if you have 80, you actually only need to mine twice. After the potions are made, I pick them up from the barrels, go to the boss and use them on it to begin the fight. The boss is actually ridiculously easy if you know how to flinch. All you need to do is go behind the pillar, hit the boss when it's not doing that slam on the ground, and not stand in two specific attacks. And that is the massive eye ability, which is very obvious, just move behind the pillar. And eventually the boss will shoot out poison into these three vents at the front. When this happens, you just run over to the opposite side and continue the flinching. Also, when the boss is close to dying, I do use the death charge ability, which when killing an enemy will restore some of my special attacks, so I can use my Bandos God Sword right away in the next fight. You can see I just got 15% more energy charge right there on my special attack, and that is my first kill, 3 minutes. Very slow, can be sped up quite a bit actually if I just get 2 herb lore and 2 mining levels. Oh my god, 3kc frozen tablet? That is not that rare of a drop, but it's the teleport to the boss, so really useful to get early. Also, don't look at the time, I did AFK in the boss room, meanwhile explaining the last clip. We can now retire this icy basalt and instead use this frozen tablet on the Ring of Shadows. And let's now actually click teleport. We can now teleport to the Gorox dungeon. Let's see how close this actually is. Yeah, that's uh, quite a time saver. As I'm going to be at the Duke for a while, thought I might as well just get the levels out of the way to speed up the kills a bit, and that is 80 herb lore. Every time I go to the Mud Lone Mine to get my mining up, I get reminded how absolutely terrible of an experience this is. And after actually going to iron mining instead, that is 80 mining. Now on the topic of mining, when I was 10 years old, I used to tell my friends at school to hop onto RuneScape and mine iron ore for me. I'd buy it for 100 GP each and told them, this is a great price guys. Just to turn around and sell it to other players for 200 GP, making absolute bank. 18 years later, I'm happy to announce that Jagex has sponsored this video to let you guys know about the Old School RuneScape Summer Summit livestream. On August 19th at 8pm UK time, 3pm Eastern or 12pm Pacific. The livestream is found on the official Old School RuneScape Twitch channel, a link to that is found at the top of this video's description. 
On the Summer Summit livestream, the old school RuneScape team will share their plans for the rest of the year into early 2024. The past Winter Summit had announcements such as Death to Treasure 2, which was one of the best updates I've personally experienced so far, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel this way. So make sure you tune into the livestream on the 19th of August at 8pm UK time, 3pm Eastern or 12pm Pacific to check out what the old school RuneScape team has planned for the rest of the year and into early 2024. Thank you again so much to Jagex for sponsoring this video, a bit of a dream come true. Let's get back into the video. Alright, when using my pestle and mortar, we are now getting 6 of these mushrooms per time, and that should be the case for the salt as well, meaning we only have to get 2 each time instead of 3. Also, I have now added the kill counter at the bottom, which unfortunately for the first 2 kills did not track at all, so we will be 2 behind. It is a bit unfortunate, and I don't know why that happened, but I think it was because the new update was just in to make it work, but now it does work, 70k on the tracker, so when this tracker reaches 718, that means we have actually killed 720. Now hear me out, the Bandos God Sword, which is what I've been using as a special attack, is said to be the best with a scythe, but uh, I've had the worst hits ever ever on this weapon in all of these kills so i'm going to try another one we are going to be trying the dragon claws they are 92 million gp so quite hefty but uh, hopefully i'm going to get massive hits with them the boss only has 440 hp so that is why i want to try these claws to see how fast of a kill i can get if i get massive hits in let's try it out 285 xp drop and second one 452 i got 120 hp off the boss right away that is insane and with that that is 10 kill count deep into the grind of course eight on the tracker two behind as always and the dragon claws are ridiculously nice to use of course that was a pretty slow kill but yeah i'm very happy with the purchase i'm going to keep using them maybe in the future i'll go back and try the bgs again but for now i'm enjoying this Oh, we got the first clue scroll of the grind, an easy one. You can actually get clue scrolls all the way from easy to elite from these bosses. They all have one in 160, so getting any type of clue scroll from these is one in 40. Let's go! The first Awakener is over the grind very early. These are one in 48, so we should see quite a lot of them. These are the items you need to start the hard modes of the bosses, and also they just added this to the collection log actually, so that is why I unlocked it now. I actually got a recommendation from one of my friends to bring the light bearer, which actually makes a lot of sense because special attack here is extremely useful. As you saw earlier in the video, my D class just goes absolutely crazy here. So as soon as the boss dies, I equip the ring and during this preparation phase where you're actually not fighting anything, you get back a bunch of special attack. Alright, so the prep is done and we went from 35% special attack all the way to 85. So that is definitely worth bringing. Okay, so we have a golden opportunity here to talk about the perfect kills. I just got five dragon plate legs and that means I failed something during the fight. If I wouldn't have failed anything, it would have been counted as a perfect kill and I would get 50% more loot, meaning seven dragon plate legs. This, by the way, does not affect uniques at all, only the common drops. And we have the first hard clue of the grinds. I am not going to be showing every single clue drop that I get, but I'll show the first one of each tier that I get. A bit of a small advice I want to give you guys, if you type health in on settings, you can actually see this one, show enemy name on health overlay. If I have this on, the health bar of the boss is actually quite a bit bigger and kind of blocks my damage hits on the boss when going really close to it. You can see it kind of blocks the boss right now. But if I remove this, to type in health again, it is going to make the health bar a lot slimmer and it actually doesn't block as much of the encounter, so you can see more. So just to demonstrate, with a smaller hit points bar now, you can see that the damage I'm going to be doing is just below it. So if I do the damage, you can see it's barely being hidden by the HP bar. And if you have the bigger hit points bar, you can imagine it pretty much just covers the entire hit splats. Of course, you can alleviate this by zooming out more like this, but sometimes I want to be a bit more zoomed in to focus on what's happening. And you know, not look like an ant. Hey, we have the first medium clear of the grind. That is my ranger boots, hopefully. Money from this boss is pretty good, we are now hitting 100 kill count after this one and we have gained nearly 9 million GP, so 90k per kill. 
Since the new quest and bosses came out, you have only been able to have one ring of shadow, so if you died on a boss, you had to teleport back, run back, get all your stuff without the ring's teleports. But you can now buy as many as you want for, I think, 75k, yes. I can now buy 10 of these, 750k, and I can charge them all, and if I die, I have a bunch of teleports right back to my grave. 152 personal best absolutely insane hits that one i'm actually going to go out and see what the world record is currently one minute and 17 seconds okay we're not quite there yet awakeners orb number two at this point like 40 percent of my profit is only from these orbs I will take it. We got collection log slot Ice Quartz. That is the upgrade for the Ancient Scepter. It boosts the ice spells on the Ancient Spellbook by a bit. It gives 10% more accuracy on unfrozen targets. Oh, no. No way. It has 3 HP. That is actually, I think, yeah, that's the first death of the entire grind. I was way too greedy there, I admit it. Well, at least this gives me a good excuse to show you guys the second ring of shadows and uh, how fast I get back to my loot. I mean, it's just same teleport as before. Oh my god. Yo, no way. That's actually 150 KC. What do I do now? We're already done. That's the axe piece. That's the eye of the duke I was going for. We've made 12.7 million GP so far. And uh, I guess all we have left to do now on this one challenge is to open the clue scrolls. So this is now my duke Sosilus collection log. I would say pretty good uh, collection log for what KC I'm at. And the virtus pieces can still be unlocked through the other Desert Treasure 2 bosses. So we can still get those unlocked by not even doing the duke. But let's go ahead and open the five caskets we got. Let's start with the easy ones for a very nice 2.5k, 1k mediums. These have the ranger boots potential, as I was talking about earlier, but not this time. And the last one, hard clue score 180k. After selling all the loot, we managed to make 12.5 million GP in this video. And getting no virtus pieces and no ring drop, that is pretty good money, I would say. Of course, we still have three more Desert Treasure 2 bosses to make on drop rates for, so if you want to be notified when those come out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But until next time, guys, take care.